The richest person ever to walk the earth, at least in modern human history, is 54-year-old Jeff Bezos. Oh, it absolutely is. Best known for his role as Amazon CEO, he's got the kind of money that we can't even begin to imagine. According to an estimate, spending $80,000 to him is equivalent to an average American spending $1. But what does he spend his money on? Aside from the standard food, gas, and other associated bills, Jeff isn't afraid to branch out with his luxurious tastes. Make sure to stick around until the end to find out what Jeff spent $4 billion on. In 2016, Jeff Bezos paid $23 million for a 27,000 square foot mansion in Washington, D.C., which quickly also became known as the biggest house in Washington, D.C. With a price tag that size, you'd expect the property to be pretty big, but it surpassed everyone's expectations once the blueprints were revealed. The house sits in the Kalorama neighborhood, and Jeff's neighbors include President Obama and his family, who are renting a property nearby for their post-White House home, as well as first daughter Ivanka Trump and her husband. The property spans two historic mansions, which house the textile museum for nearly 90 years. More importantly, the blueprints suggested that Jeff was making good use of all this space. He planned to have a ballroom, a whiskey cellar, elevators, a garden room, 11 bedrooms, and 25 bathrooms inside his exorbitantly priced house. It includes nearly 27,000 square feet of living space and a spacious backyard on top of all of that. Jeff paid in cash for his house, if we can call it a house, and is reportedly said to be spending $12 million to renovate the homes and the surrounding property. But what's a billionaire without a fancy private jet to get around in? Come on, you can't have expected the Amazon CEO to fly standard class when he's traveling around the world. But this man won't even settle for first class luxury, and instead decided to splash out on his very own private jet. And Jeff being Jeff didn't want to do things by halves, so he purchased one of the fanciest private jets on the market, the Gulfstream G650ER. Jeff owns the plane through his holding company Poplar Glen, and the jet was delivered in 2015 and has a value of around $75 million. Jeff clearly thought ahead when it came to this purchase too, because he decided to buy a private jet big enough to carry all of his nearest and dearest from A to B. The jet can comfortably seat 14 people at once, and if ever you wanted to keep an eye out for Jeff, or maybe just his plane while it's in the air, we'll let you in on a secret. The registration number for this vehicle is N271DV, but don't say we told you so. We imagine a billionaire like Jeff gets a lot of use out of his private jet, and one place he seemingly rides it fairly often is to New York City. Like many of us, he's a fan of the bustling city, but he also owns property there. Which might not come as too much of a surprise, but once again, Jeff wasn't happy with the basics. Instead of purchasing just one apartment in the city, he splashed out on multiple apartments, with a value of millions and millions of dollars. In 1999, he bought three condos in the Century Building at 25 Central Park West in Manhattan's Upper West Side for $7.65 million. Then, he purchased another unit for $5.3 million in 2012, making him the owner of four condos in the historic building. The 32-story Art Deco building was built in 1931 and boasts the concierge, elevator attendants, and three separate entrances. We bet he enjoys waking up in the morning and admiring the panoramic views of Central Park, too. In April 2019, reports suggested that Jeff was looking to drop $60 million on another NYC apartment, but it seems he's still in the shopping stages. Let's take a break from property. Although it's fair to say that Jeff certainly has a lot more fancy places to talk about, and let's move on to something a little more diverse. Jeff decided to spend more than a good handful of his dollars on a clock. But let's get something straight here, because he's not an antiques collector or anything like that. It's rather the opposite. Jeff invested 42 million into a clock that'll run for 10,000 years. You heard that right. Although we're not sure what sort of guarantee a clock like that would come with, because it's not like anyone building it will be able to keep track that far in the future. The actual idea for the clock originally came from Danny Hillis, who proposed a 10,000 year clock in 1995 in Wired Magazine as a way to think about the long-term future of humanity and the planet. Jeff caught onto the idea, and with the financial backing of his companies, decided to make it into a real thing. It'll be 500 feet tall, all mechanical, powered by day and night thermal cycles, and will synchronize at solar noon. Who needs a Rolex after all? Who knows what goes through Jeff's mind with some of these wacky purchases? One of his expenses, which initially caused a lot of widespread disbelief, was Jeff's buying of the Washington Post newspaper. Donald Graham, son of the Washington Post's legendary publisher Catherine Graham, was the first to suggest that Jeff should buy the Washington Post. What was interesting was that at first Jeff said no, pointing out that he knew nothing about the journalism industry. When the Grahams pointed out that they wanted someone with internet experience rather than newspaper specifically, Jeff thought again. He eventually decided to buy the Washington Post for $250 million. Perhaps that huge figure is the reason why the Grahams were so desperate to sell the paper that they'd owned for 80 years. 
Jeff said of his decision, quote, It is the newspaper in the capital city of the most important country in the world. The Washington Post has an incredibly important role to play in this democracy. There's no doubt in my mind about that. End quote. He quickly implemented a new business model into the newspaper, and profits began to grow. Perhaps it wasn't such an outlandish purchase after all. If you could buy anything in the world, no limits and no questions asked, what would it be? We think that Jeff has kept this incredible purchase in his mind since he was a kid because it's certainly a childhood dream for many children. That's right. We're talking about Jeff's Blue Origin Rocket Factory. Blue Origin is hoping to be the future of space exploration, and so far, it's doing a good job. No one had ever launched, landed, and relaunched a rocket into space until the company's historic achievement, and Jeff's planning to revolutionize space travel like never before. By putting his own money into this venture, he's hoping that he'll get it back in the future in the form of profits. He said, quote, When you look at expendable rockets today, the cost of propellant is only about 1% of the cost of the mission. The big costs come from throwing that aerospace-grade hardware away. With reusability, in theory, you can see a path to lowering the cost of access to space by a factor of 100. End quote. His end goal, after putting even more money into Blue Origin, is to make a launch that today costs 60 million or 100 million into a cost of just 1 million. You might wonder if Jeff ever gets a little bit lonely up there with all of his billions of dollars. Of course, he has his family, but perhaps he doubts the authenticity of some of his friends, and whether they actually like him or they're just up there with him because of his billions of dollars. That might be the reason as to why Jeff splashed out on this next purchase, a robot dog. Sure, he has enough money to buy as many of man's best friend as he likes, but he knows for sure that a robot dog is always by his side, because that's all it's programmed to do. The pooch's name is Spot Mini, and it looks like the killer robot dogs in the Metalhead episode of Black Mirror. Designed by Boston Dynamics, the dog is so smart that it can even open doors, and we bet it has a smaller appetite compared to your standard pooch too. It might not surprise you to hear that these robot dogs are incredibly rare, and as a result, come with a pretty hefty price tag. It's time to drop by into another one of Jeff's impressive houses, and this one comes with an even larger cost, if that's even possible. We'll take you on a quick tour of Jeff's Beverly Hills mansion to be, which could set him back about $88 million, or more than we'll likely ever see in our combined lives. That's a sad thought, isn't it? Anyway, uh, back to the house. The enormous estate is nearly 25,000 square feet, and features an additional 20,000 square feet of outdoor decks, patios, and gardens. The mansion features nine bedrooms, a state-of-the-art car elevator, a movie theater, a game room, a spa with a steam room, a massage room, and an art studio. But that wasn't enough to keep Jeff happy. He and his girlfriend, Lauren Sanchez, also considered buying a property next door to build a professional-grade sports facility. Anybody else could barely afford the taxes on this Cali mansion. The property taxes on this estate were $159,131, according to the listing on Zillow. No one's sure whether Jeff's actually gone through with the purchase, but media reports definitely suggest that he's keen. You might wonder what Jeff does with all of these properties, because it doesn't take a genius to figure out that he can only realistically live in one at a time. Maybe he rents them out to friends and family. He's actually looked at being a bit thriftier with the Seattle house that he used to live in more 20 years ago. Outside of Seattle on Lake Washington, Jeff owns a 5.3 acre estate that he purchased for $10 million in 1998. Two residences are located on the grounds, including a 20,600 square foot, 5 bedroom, 4 bathroom abode, and an 8,300 square foot, 5 bedroom, 4 bathroom home. He also purchased the property next door in 2010 under an LLC, which was listed for $53 million. In February 2019, he decided to put his original Seattle house up for sale, the one that he purchased back in the day before these two larger ones, with a price tag of $1.5 million. A recent property listing for a three-bedroom house at 10704 Northeast 28th Street in Bellevue, Washington, bills the home as the birthplace of Amazon. The home features a 13-foot vaulted pine ceiling and a stone fireplace, but probably looks quite different to how it did back when Jeff lived there. Let's stick around in Seattle for this final extortionate purchase, because it's definitely an unmissable one. As CEO of Amazon, Jeff gets to make all the important business decisions, and so he decided to throw caution to the wind with the arrival of a redesigned Amazon campus in Seattle, which set him and the company back a huge $4 billion. Amazon's Seattle campus is spread over four downtown blocks. As per a report by Inc., one of the structures is called the Spheres, where an entire tropical forest has been replicated. Now that can't have come cheap. Rivers, waterfalls, and towering green walls are meant to take employees into a headspace as serene as the tropical forest the foliage tries to replicate. Workers can spend their days clustered in tree houses to work and collaborate, surrounded by natural beauty. For scenery, the Spheres feature river and waterfall features and a four-story living wall. It's probably the fanciest office we've ever seen. And sure, it might have cost billions of dollars, but it's likely to result in a lot of happy staff members. What do you think? Would you want to work in this office? 
And that's all for 10 ridiculous expensive things that Jeff Bezos owns. Would you ever spend that kind of money on these items? Let us know in the comments below. And make sure to like this video, subscribe to The Richest, and join our notification squad. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.